everybody. This is Larry Greenblatt. Welcome back to How to Pass the CASSP Exam with the help of Star Trek's Captain Kirk and Mr. Spock. And today's episode from Domain 7, Security Operations. And hopefully you've been through this. You know my take on the differences between subjective or qualitative thinking versus objective or quantitative thinking. So remember, subjective thinking is opinions. Oh, where is the subject? And she's playing an object here. She's playing the Vulcan harp. And is the music that she's playing good? Depends on your opinion. But the uh, objective reasoning, that deals with facts. This has four knobs on it. That's the quantity of, of knobs. It has a, a quantity of 30 strings. Quantitative or objective reasoning is fact-based. And we hope we can pass the test using facts as much as we can. Uh, but sometimes it's not so simple. It's up to a subjective view. So, for instance, we have to look at this from the subjective view of a risk manager. We're not the guy that's making changes. We're not the guy that makes decisions. We're the person that understands how security works and we make recommendations. We, we work with the business unit to determine the requirements and then we suggest to them this is how we would solve this. And then uh, it goes to an IT, a data custodian to administer those things. But we're not, any, any answer that says fire the guy or disconnect the system, it's probably wrong. So remember our subjective viewpoint here is as an advisor. We know that the uh, ISO, very testable uh, organization, is like our, the Federation in Star Trek. And many people think the ISO is an acronym uh, for International Standards Organization, but no, it comes from the Greek. It's a word. It means equal. So it helps us all get along together so we can share this wonderful road. Wonderful internet is the standards we care about, the 27,000 series. All right, so in my, uh, my scenarios here, Kirk and Spock are taking the test, and uh, Kirk will read the question to Spock and try to get his advice. Spock, critical systems are migrated to a hot site after a disaster. The backup operator from the recovery team receives a call from a user complaining that the data that have been restored for their system are too old to be of any use. The operator checks the tape that was used for the restore and confirms it was indeed the most recent backup and that the tape was created only the night before. What is the most likely cause of the problem? A. The user is looking at a cached copy. That is possible, Captain. That happens a lot. The data was restored to the wrong directory. Well, that is possible too, but that would assume that there was an error made on the part of the uh, backup operator. All right, but it is possible. Yes, Captain. There is a network latency issue. Is that possible? It is possible, Captain, though many times people blame the network when it's really an application problem. Okay, so recovery point objectives are very short. Well, that is true too. What are recovery point objectives, Spock? Explain to me a little bit more. Well, when we make a plan for disaster recovery, part of our business continuity analysis, we gather some key statistics, key metrics that must be used to build an appropriate plan. So for instance, how long can I afford to be without a given process? How long could we afford to be without medical or engineering or the transporter room? I see. So if the maximum tolerable downtime, say for the transporter room is one day, yes, Captain. Uh, then we would have a recovery time objective of how long would it take us to rebuild the transporter room. And that would have to be less than a day because it may be a, a moment before we even notice that there was a transporter room problem. I see, Spock, that makes sense. Does that pertain to this question? Negative, Captain. Recovery point objectives is what this question was pointed out. On answer four or answer uh, D, recovery point objectives determine the age the, of the data that can be restored. So for instance, if you had a recovery point objective for your logs, they would probably be in near zero data loss. Some things can be up to maybe say four hours and some things could be 24 hours or longer. Aha. Uh -huh. So in that scenario, the recovery point objectives, if they were very short, then nightly backups would not be recent enough and could be the solution to that problem. Let's see that question again, Spock. Critical systems are migrated to a hot site after disaster. 
the backup operator from the recovery team receives a call from a user complaining that the data that have been restored for their system are too old to be of any use. The operator checks the tape that was used for the restore and confirms it was indeed the most recent backup and that the tape was created only the night before. Hmm. Spock, you said that this could be any one of these, but I have a hunch that knowing the ISC square and that the CISSP is mostly concerned as a manager of planning level, that this is most likely the problem, that perhaps they just didn't create an effective plan. That is logical, Captain. I can't argue with that. Well then, Spock, we are picking D and moving on. Yes. It is important that we gather those key statistics. In fact, I mentioned a few other ones there. I'm going to I briefly, whatever, or two of them, two more I should put, point out. Minimum operating requirements are actually some of the most um, overlooked ones. And say the, the operating requirement was I had to be able to print 20 pages per minute. That's the service. But I would need paper, toner, to be able to do that. And it's my understanding that supplies are the most overlooked item. I've had a number of people in my class from uh, people like SunGuard and, and uh, other disaster recovery and, uh, and organizations, and they tell me that is by far the most overlooked thing. But in this case, we were looking at recovery point objectives, and there are some times when you can live with data that's 24 hours old, and then in which case nightly backups work. But when you're looking at like financial systems, email systems, we have recovery point objectives that are much shorter than that, near zero data loss. This is another reason why the cloud has become so uh, important to organizations and optimal because they mirror their data across multiple locations. Now, that is a solution often on the test is to use the cloud. Sometimes we'll look at things like um, uh, journaling or vaulting, which are really older technologies. I know a lot of CISSP books look at, at those things. My understanding of the way they do it in the cloud and the way some organizations uh, privately do it is through block level mirroring. So they'll, they'll just look at a block of data on a disk and create a hash of that. And if that hash is newer, uh, they know that this block is newer and they just copy that block over. Another very often overlooked uh, metric is maximum time in alternate operations. So let's say I, I get a flat tire and I can afford to be off the road for up to an hour. It takes me five minutes to pull over to the side of the road. So I, I've got 50 minutes to get the tire back on. But now that I have the donut tire on, and it has to be able to say supply at least uh, 55 miles per hour. It's, it's a smaller tire. It's not the same service levels that I get for a normal tire, but it's enough to get me out of the, the problem for now. I can't drive on a donut tire forever. Very, very important for our test. You are not out of the emergency until you have returned to normal operations. So I don't know if they use this metric. I haven't heard that, but certainly it is alluded to many test questions. And I've said this before, if you've been through my material uh, over the uh, nearly 18 years I've been teaching this, this is the number one failed area. Most people will get really blindsided by how many business continuity questions they can get. So. All right, I hope that helped people. If you want to learn more, I would love to see you in one of my classes. I teach live online and I also sell pre-recorded versions of my class. I also do uh, a practice exam for you guys. I send out the exam with no answers and then uh, you can schedule time for me up to four hours or more that you'd like uh, to do a one-on-one -on -one review via uh, live online. And you can see my schedule at internetworkdefense.com. And uh, for more questions, I've been working with Clement Dupuy for almost as long as I've been in this field. A fantastic uh, a series of tests that he provides at C-Secure. And uh, nobody knows more about this test than Clement. That's my opinion, subjectively. All right, thank you again. May you all live long and prosper.